Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters. It is Wednesday, I think. It is Wednesday. Almost afternoon. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Wednesday. It's funny, I'm working from home and just these days just keep smashing into one another. And uh, we've got a fellow sister, uh, Rachel G., beautiful, beautiful sister. We're, we're talking about how time is, is feels like it's speeding up. And um, to the literal, like it's actually getting quicker and quicker. And how when you would do the, the 1 1000 test to get to uh, a minute, it doesn't feel like it's adding up to 60 seconds. So anyway, some interesting conversation I'm, I'm having with one of our fellow sisters. It's awesome. And I love that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm reading Luke today. And uh, the part right at the beginning where, where uh, John the Baptist dad, Zachariah, and Gabriel comes to him and explains to him, you know, you and your wife are going to have a child. And he's looking at this angel going, I'm an old man. Like, that's not going to happen. And the angel, Gabriel, says, okay, well, your wife is pregnant. And because of your unbelief, I'm going to make you dumb, so unable to speak until she's given birth. And so just that story in itself, and then finally when, when Elizabeth gives birth, and then they're trying to pick a name and, and all the people that are around are, are like giving them names that were common and amongst the family. And, and all of a sudden they come out with John and you can just like visually see these people standing around going, John, like, why are you going to call him John? And so you have Zachariah has got to write down on a writing board that, yes, I want to call him John and then is released from that and then can speak again. And just the look on the, the people's faces around them as this all took place place would have just been the most amazing experience ever and I just want to praise the father for for giving us the ability when we're reading these testimonies to actually put ourselves there for a moment to be able to relive them and and what an honor it is to have these the ability of being able to have an imagination and to be able to think and to be able to remember and to be able to put yourself in, in another person's shoes so that you can you can feel what they were feeling these are not gifts by accident, dear brothers and sisters. I, I am a firm believer that, you know, while we're reading the good word, we just have such a, a, a great, amazing ability that our father's given us for him to take us and put us in that situation for a moment. So we knew what it would feel like. And how amazing is that, that good book? And just the fact that when, when our savior and John uh, met each other in the womb and jumped for joy. It, it, it truly shows us how our father has formed us before we even knew what we were and had these plans for us and how we had the ability to jump in our mother's wounds because we were cognizant of what was happening around us. It just praise God, praise the father. You guys, it's just it, it every time you open that book, it gets better and better. And so I encourage you keep opening that book, keep opening that book. Cause you just, it's like anything. You remember even before I got into the Bible, I was never a big reader, but I always remember hearing the same thing from people that read a lot. And that was, you could read the same book twice, but you would get a different message from it. Well, how interesting is that? It just so conveniently happens that when you read the good book, it's the same thing. So our father will always direct your eyes to what you need to see at that point. And that's how amazing he is. You're going to take that nugget of what you need at that exact moment in time from that scripture that you're reading at that exact moment to give you that nugget of wisdom, of gold, of beautiful fruit that you need to help carry you on going forward. So I'm just in awe of the Holy Spirit right now, just reading these, you know, these, and I, I apologize. I keep saying they're stories. They're not stories. They're testimonies. They're, uh, they're amazing counts uh, of, of brothers and sisters before us that went through these amazing things. And, and we go through them as well, dear brothers and sisters. And the Holy Spirit, the Father put on my spirit today to actually share a couple of those moments with you. Um, a couple of real defining spiritual, supernatural moments in my life that um, that I went through that, that made me realize I wasn't alone and, and uh, really changed the course and my path of, of who I am. And uh, thanks, all praise goes to the Father, you guys, because uh, here I am today before you. Um, the first story, I'll give you a little bit of background of, of myself. And I had I di did do a testimony several videos back, if you're interested. And this is just kind of an offshoot of to the side of that with a little more detail. I didn't bring this particular story up 
Um, but, uh, basically what's happened is, um, I was not a, a great guy. I used to, uh, I used to put a lot of things into my body. Hi, you always like to show up. Hey, come, come here quick. Come on, good boy. And, um, and so I used to put a lot of things in my body. I used to put a lot of mind altering things in my body. And looking back on my life, I regret nothing, dear brothers and sisters. Um, it, it upsets me that I, I, I would have hurt our father at that time by doing these things. But every road leads to the straight and narrow, dear brothers and sisters. It's whether we choose to jump off that path that we are currently on and then back onto the one that was ordained to us from the beginning. And so we used to, um, all of my friends were DJs. We loved electronic music. I always, always, there was something inside of me. I just always loved that music. I loved the fact that it didn't have any words and, and coerced you into thinking a certain way because the prince of the air and his talent is music. There is that they explain that. I, I forget what passage in the Bible says that, but it, it, it alludes to the fact that his ribs were made out of a flute. And so I'll try and find that and put it in the description because that's one where people don't really necessarily believe or understand that he was, his specialty was music. And so here we are. Every ounce of music that's out there is, uh, is been tainted. And if it's, if it's gospel Christian music, it's not famous. And I wonder why. I wonder why Christian and gospel music isn't famous. But um, so we used to listen to this music. And, and like I said, I enjoyed it because it, it was high energy. It just, I always had a smile on my face. And plus, when I got intoxicated, it made you feel really, really good. And so we... We would do this countless weekends after weekend after weekend. And there was one night in particular, uh, my close friend, still to this very day, my closest friends of, of closest friends, he, him and I, um, as I've said in other videos, have gone through the exact same situations together, have witnessed uh, a many a time to our father's glory and beauty and uh, been wrath to a lot of uh, the enemies as well. And... Um, we, he lived in this house uh, just outside of Toronto, and it was it was uh, supernaturally charged. Um, I was in a friend's room one time, and and we were intoxicated, and and being intoxicated was always the easy way out to say that that must have been why it happened because we were right out of it. But that definitely was not the case, dear brothers and sisters, because uh, these things would happen whether we're sober or annihilated, whatever the case may be. And uh, so these things would happen in this house to the point where we had, we, we knew it. We knew something was going on. And I was in a friend's room one time and we both heard a voice um, get out of the house and we heard the word satanic verses. And we didn't know what that meant and we were freaked out by it. And it just so happens that the gentleman that was renting the house to my buddy the guy that lived in the basement before used to read the satan read, used to read a satanic bible in the house and right there now with these eyes that you you can see your brothers and sisters that's why that energy was there present in that house and so again we would tempt this spirit all the time by every time you use pharmacia you are opening up a door that uh, you know eventually gets larger and larger and larger and harder to close and that's exactly what was happening with us and my kitty is crying in the background. And um, so, yeah, as, as the nights would go on, I, I specifically remember one night in particular. And I was laying on the couch and I had a buddy of mine in front of me. And he brought his buddy that I never really hung out with before. And he was roommates with my close buddy that was with his now fiance at the time in the other room. And I'm laying on the couch and they're all just talking. It was always the same kind of conversation, you know, pretty much about music or what we were doing, that kind of thing. And all of a sudden I started getting these bad thoughts. And um, every time I got, I did these drugs, I would think that God was with me and talking to me. And although I know he was with me the whole time, what... I thought I was communicating with at the time was the enemy pretending to be an angel of light and hindsight looking back on that and, and praying about it the father told me loud and clear I was with you the whole time but I hate to say it to you a lot of those times when you were interacting with something it wasn't me and I understand that now and that that's how that the point of this story is to show you our 
enemy is a snake. And so he will pretend he is your best friend. He'll pretend that he is the good guy. He will do whatever it takes to make sure he knocks you off that path. And that's the bottom line. But I was laying on the couch and I was starting to think about how I was getting upset and how I didn't want to do this, live this life anymore. And, and uh, he heard me. My, he took over a friend of mine in the next room and my closest friend in the world. And he yells out from the other room, calling out for me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, is this really happen? Like, and I started getting upset. I started um, getting really, really scared. And so my friend comes out of the room and uh, there he is standing in a black like, bath towel. And um, he looks at me and he's got this, he, he was different. I could tell he was different and I knew it was the enemy and I knew it. And so we just started having this conversation because I didn't, I wasn't really, I, I didn't believe it at first because I knew I was intoxicated. I knew it was like the, the night was over. It was that next morning. We hadn't slept yet. I knew I was tired and I just kind of attributed it all to being that. And the two friends that were in the same room with me had changed as well. And I could see it. I could see it in their, their facial expressions. It's um, nothing really changed other than their smiles and how they were looking at me. I knew it wasn't them. And the conversation, they all ganged up on me and just basically started trying to bully me and push me into, they, they had sensed that I wanted to get out and they were not having any part of it. And I remember the enemy looking at me and, and saying, I can give you whatever you want. You know, you've got a great, he started off by telling me that I have a, a great gift of gab. He goes, you know, your, your people like you, I could really use somebody that has these kind of gifts. And then it hit me really, really who I was talking to. And I remember barking back at him when I knew who it was and, and mocked him and laughed him and said, look at how sad it is that you even come out here in a black robe trying to convince me to work for your team and, and I will never do it. And at that point, I had always, I, I, I was raised Catholic and I, I always, and I'm very thankful for the, the job that my mom and dad did. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful that I've come out of it and to understand the truth of it all. And I pray that they will one day. But I always had the sense of who our father was and I knew who Jesus was and it was always there. I just was relentlessly searching for truth. I did, but I just didn't know what that truth looked like. So I just kept searching and searching. And unfortunately, the path that it led me down was through a, a life of, of drugs and just the wrong way, sin. And so I mocked the, the enemy for wearing a white, uh, or sorry, for wearing a black uh, uh, bath gown. And he didn't even get upset. He kind of thought it was funny. And that kind of like freaked me out a little bit because I was expecting a little bit of a harsh reaction and I never got it. And then I heard our father plain as day in my head tell me, do not pay any attention to him. Do not mock him. Do not underestimate him. And so he's standing there before me and he looks at me and, and it's like he could feel that I was having this conversation with the father. And he said to me, he goes, you know what? I know, William, I know you want to be a DJ. I know you love the music. I can make you the greatest DJ that's ever been on the planet. And I looked at him and I laughed at him again and said, do you think that that's what I'd be willing to trade my soul for is to be the greatest DJ on the planet? I said, you're, you're mistaken, sir. You have no idea who I am. And again, I could hear in my head the father telling me not to talk to him. Do not talk to him. Do not acknowledge him to ignore him and to rebuke him and that I should close my eyes and say the Our Father. And that's what I did, dear brothers and sisters. I put my head in the pillow. I said the Our Father. I opened my eyes back up and everything was back to normal. Now, years later, I've had conversations with my dear friend about this. We've talked about it lots. We've talked about it later on still while I was starting, you know, fighting to get out of, out of that lifestyle. And then now that we've been sober and his recount re count of that night, sorry, was that he remembers talking to me, but he doesn't remember that conversation. He, he remembers a different conversation. He remembers us talking, but it wasn't what I thought was happening. And so how easy is it for you when you're intoxicated to think, ah, oh, that's what that's what it was. You, you, you dismiss the fact that something supernatural happened to you because you, you think that you were intoxicated, not realizing that because you were intoxicated brought on the supernatural. And so him and I had this conversation about it. And, and the fact that he had had different version of that 
made me realize that we are working in, in different realms here, brothers and sisters, in the physical and the spiritual. And what was happening to me at that time with the enemy was within was in the spiritual as where my brother that was had his body being used because he was under pharmacia by the enemy was having a different conversation with me at that time. Therefore, it could be very easy for one of us to think, well, that guy's crazy. That obviously didn't happen. He probably shouldn't do any of that anymore. But we had a very good knowledge at, at that point that we were involved in something uh, bigger than us. We knew that just from the w different things that had happened to, to us in our lives. And I've got countless stories kind of like this, dear brothers and sisters. And I'm not saying them to glorify the enemy in any way. I'm just telling you that your father, our father is always there for us, no matter what. We just have to want to listen. We want to hear that voice. And in our time of need and that time of, of being scared, he was there for me right away to tell me what to do and, and how to guide me through. And from that point on, those words have always stuck with me, not to give him any kind of credence at all, not, not to even um, really even think about him. So when I bring him up in, in these videos, dear brothers and sisters, it's not that I'm trying to glorify him in any way. It's, it's for us to share with each other, one another, these, these different things that have happened to us so that when if, if they happen to you, you're, you're, you're aware of what you need to do and that you're fully armed. It's that full armor that we need to have at all times, dear brothers and sisters. So prayer is definitely very, very important. And it was strong enough to send these three packing. So it was amazing when I, as soon as I prayed and opened my eyes, it was all back to normal. And it just blew my mind how just something as amazing as a prayer could alleviate all of the trouble that I was in at that time. The second thing I want to bring up, uh, I used to work at a call center and, um, it was, uh, it was depending on the time zone that you were working in at that time. I was on the East Coast, but you could be working, you know, a maritime shift. Um, so like far, far East Coast, like Newfoundland, that kind of thing. And so depending on your shift, you could start later. And so my shift did start late at that point. Um, I believe it was like six to one or something like that in the morning. And he was on the same shift as me, this gentleman that I was working with. And, uh, he had a huge part in changing my life forever. He uh, he could see something in me. He could see the, the spirit in me, and he understood that I was searching. He saw that. And our Father, the Holy Spirit, put it on him to approach me. And our Father, being the amazing, amazing Father that he is, knew the exact words to tell my friend what to say to me to, to, to get me to listen. And so he walks up to me and asks me, he goes, so do you like the matrix? And he must have overheard me talking to fellow coworkers about how I, at that time, loved that movie more than any other movie. And uh, I looked at him and I laughed and I said, yeah, I do. And asked him why. And he said, because I, I'd like to know if you want to take the red pill, he says to me. And I just look at him. I'm like, what are you going to? And I knew a little bit about him. I didn't know much, but I knew I knew he had a really just beautiful demeanor. Him and I hit it off right away. Um, he's actually from Winnipeg. And so he knew that I, you know, had family in Saskatchewan. And so anyways, him and I bonded over that. It was actually we bonded over like the rivalry of our football teams, which is silly. But it, it's our father works in many ways and he'll get to however he needs to get to it. And so him and I were kind of close as it was, but I didn't understand who he was and what kind of faith he had. And uh, so anyways, he says this to me, asked me if I want to take the, the red pill. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So then he tells me who he is. And uh, he's a Seventh-day Adventist. And I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I don't even know if I ever have, but either way, you know what I'm talking about. And so he asked if, if he could pray with me. And I said, yeah, you know, and at this point here, you know, I'd, I'd, again, I'd, I'd always had our father in our life and I always thought I was walking the path, the right path. I always did. And if you asked, if you knew any of my friends from back in the day, I was just always, always that guy. When we would go to parties, I would preach. That's how I would do it. Not knowing that I was putting myself in these crazy situations and still defying our father because I'm getting intoxicated, which he in turn showed me later on that that was taking his name in vain by going out and thinking I was doing his work all the while by sinning, sinning on purpose, thinking that was my way to get to him, was, was to be under the influence. 
And so when he finally revealed to me that that truly was taking his name in vain by, by thinking, by thinking I needed to do something evil to, to do things that were good, uh, it, uh, it blew me away and really showed me that our commandments have more meaning than we know and that we got to keep digging through that truth to find the truth. So I sit down with him and him and I are praying and, uh, he starts, you know, he starts explaining things to me about how the world's working. And, and as soon as I heard it, I knew it. And, and, and it's, our father this whole time was putting it on me, putting it on me. And, it, and he put it on me through the movies I watched. It was always the types of movies I watched. It was like my whole life was prepping me for that moment. And it was because when he told me I, I wasn't in shock. And if anything, I always elaborated on it with him to the point where my friend was just like, wow, like, how do you know, you know, for someone that's not involved, how do you know what you know? And, and I said, I've just, no, I'd always known it. I just, I, and again, it was always, you thought it was your intuition or, or your, you know, that uh, subconscious telling you, well, those are all just sciencey names for our father and the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So him and I are having just these amazing nights. So like night after night, him and I are just doing this. We're just doing Bible study after Bible study after Bible study. And at that point there, I just was in, I, I was floating. I was just so in awe of our Father and the Holy Spirit at that, that time. All the while still getting myself into trouble because I, I didn't quite at that point understand that it was wrong. Um, but him and I were, were praying one day and it was late. Like it was, we finished our shift at one o'clock and then we would always do, you know, a Bible study from one to two or whatever time we finished. And we finished one night and we were sitting there and we were praying and uh, I asked him, I said, uh, I said, why doesn't, why doesn't God show himself the way that he used to uh, with the burning bush and just these big moments, you know? And I never forget uh, my friend telling me he does. We're just too blind to see them now. And if we actually were to take the time to look around and, and, and see these things and all these moments that our father tries to speak with us, we just pass them by. A lot of us just walk by them without even acknowledging them. But as soon as we have these eyes to see as we do now, dear brothers and sisters, they just jump out at you left, right, and center. And again, you'll hear me say this till the day I die. It's the timing. It's the timing of these moments that just blow your mind and just put this ear to ear grin on your face because hallelujah, you know that he's there with you. And all of these things just combine together for him to go, I'm not just going to talk to you, William, in one area. I'm going to slap three, four, five different moments, different things at the same time so you understand who I am. And that is the great I am, dear brothers and sisters. So we're sitting there praying and he's, he's talking to me and he's explaining to me, um, you know, that he's all around us and that it's everywhere. We just need to have the eyes to see it. And, and, it, and it really sparked my interest, dear brothers and sisters. So that night as we were leaving, and it was about 2 o'clock, 2, 2.30 in the morning. Nobody's there at this point. Maybe cleaners downstairs, but other like people that actually, um, you know, had a part with their teams there were the only ones there. And so we walk out to the parking lot. And I had my truck at the time was in one spot. And then there was a couple spaces empty. And then there was my, my friend's vehicle there. And lo and behold, dear brothers and sisters, there was a dove. <sighs> There's a dove in between my vehicle and my friend's vehicle. And I could not believe it. I just sat there and cried. <laughs> And I looked at my friend and he's crying. Moments before I ask why our father doesn't show himself like he does. And there he goes and sends a dove at 2.30 in the morning in between our vehicles to show me that he loves me. And that I'm on the right path and I need to keep going. He loves us so much, brothers and sisters. So much. And he wants to show his face to us every day, all day. We just have to want to see it. And when we want to see it, we will see it. 
And I just want to say thank you, Father, for that moment because that moment changed my life. Shortly thereafter, I, I started to change. It's been a long journey, dear brothers and sisters, but it doesn't matter about the time you put in. It's about you getting back on the straight and narrow. So I just wanted to share this with you today, guys, because it, um, it, these two moments to me shaped who I am. And for the father to present himself in a way like that, it just, uh, I knew right then and there. And the, and the enemy knew he lost me right there at that moment when it happened. Because the enemy tries hard to not reveal himself to you if you haven't found the father yet. Because if you don't know, if you, sorry, if you find out the devil exists, then you'll know our father exists. So that's why he always lurks in the shadows. So I just wanted to share this with you today, dear brothers and sisters, because uh, it was put on my spirit to do so. And I want you to know I love each and every one of you. And uh, Ephesians 6, 12 Dear brothers and sisters, there there is this spiritual battle going on right now, and, and, and you have been called to fight for all that is good. So I need you to put your armor on and prepare yourself and do your studying. Get get ready. Prepare yourself with, with the, the great sword of scripture, dear brothers and sisters. And I just want you to know I love each and every one of you. I'm going to stop it here. And um, yeah. I want to thank you for everything, every comment, just being there for me. And I will continue to be there for you. And let's just keep doing this thing right until the end, until I see you at that beautiful, great banquet. So I love you. Father willing, I'll do another one and uh, we will chat soon. Take care.